Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with exercise 3D of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page number 87 and the question is number 4. So, the question reads, a particle is projected from the foot of an inclined plane which makes an angle 45 degrees with the horizontal. The initial velocity is u cos alpha i hat plus u sine alpha j hat where the i hat is along the horizontal and j hat is perpendicular to i hat. If the angle at which the particle meets the plane on landing is beta, we're asked to show what tan beta is. And then there is this, well, another three parts to the question, which I'll deal with in a moment. And to be honest, this, this question falls into the category of formula manipulation, which I've said in the past I don't particularly like. Uh, this question I don't like either because it's asking you to prove formulae which are always useful, however it doesn't get you to use the formula. So in terms of an applied maths course, I don't think that's the way it should be done. So I can see why somebody would find this, this question difficult. So what I'll do is, I'm going to do part one first, the, the tan beta part, and then in a second uh, video I'll do the further three parts to this question. So what we'll do is, we'll start by drawing our xy plane. Now the unit vectors defined in the question are these unit vectors parallel to the x, y plane. However, I don't want to use those. So, they're just to tell you where the, al where, which, where the angles are. So I'm going to define my new unit vectors parallel to the uh, x prime, y prime plane. So we have, of course, as usual, our new plane on the incline where we have x prime, y prime. We have our initial velocity vector u and I'm going to call this angle here gamma we're given this angle here at 45 degrees and we're given that this angle here alpha alright so clearly alpha minus 45 is equal to gamma so I'll use gamma as I, as I usually do the next thing of course is gravity gravity acting in the negative y direction so just to resolve that it would look like something like this g sub y g sub x so I'm just going to resolve very quickly my velocity vector u is equal to u sub x i hat plus u sub y j hat. u is equal to u times the cosine of gamma i hat plus u times the sine of gamma j hat. Also this angle here is 45 which means as per normal that the gravity vector is equal to g sub x i hat plus g sub y j hat and therefore the gravity vector is equal to g times the sine of 45 i hat plus the sine of 45 or not the sine excuse me the cosine of 45 j hat and once again notice that both these vectors are against the unit vectors so they should be uh, negative numbers and because I define g as negative 9.81 then in fact they are negative. So that's all we need for this so far, so I'm going to get rid of this diagram. This is something we've done plenty of times. So we need to know the angle at which the particle meets the plane. So we need to find the angle, uh, at, we need to basically find out when the particle finishes its movement. So I'm going to begin with the x prime axis, the y prime axis, and do my u vast. Now I'm going to leave it as an exercise because it's something we've done in the past to prove the time at which the uh, particle is at its maximum height. So, or sorry, not a maximum height, but at a maximum range. So, just basically get s sub y and set it to zero. And in this case, you're going to get negative two u sine of gamma over g cosine 45. That's something we have seen plenty of times at this stage. So, at that time. We know that the particle is after hitting the ground or the x prime axis again. All right. So what we need to do now is find out the times, or excuse me, the velocity vectors. And the reason we're going to do that is, if you could imagine that this is my incline and this is my x axis. All right. So I'm going to one second now. Let's draw that better. So there's my x axis. There's my x prime axis. If my particle is hitting the x prime like that, and we resolve it in the unit vectors, 
so we resolve parallel to the x prime and y prime axes then we get these two vectors here so this would be v sub y this is v sub x and this angle here we'll call that beta in fact it is so tan beta is equal to v sub y over v sub x and that's how we're going to find uh, a solution to this question so I'm just going to get rid of that because we don't need it yet all we need to know is that we must find v sub y and v sub x so u sub x is equal to u times the cosine of gamma and this is u times the sine of gamma this is g times the cosine of 45 and this is g times the sine of 45 then we use v is equal to u plus at and we get u cos gamma plus g sine 45 t and we get u sine gamma plus g cos 45 t I'm moving very swiftly through this because this is stuff we have seen an infinite, well not an infinite number of times, but a lot of times. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is plug this time into both of those and get a new expression. This will be the velocity vectors v sub x and v sub y when the particle is back on the x prime axis. So v sub x is equal to u cos gamma plus g sine 45 times t, which is negative 2u sine gamma over g cosine 45. There are things we can cancel here. We can cancel the g's. And this sine 45 cancels with the cosine 45, giving us a tangent 45. Tangent 45, or tan 45, is actually equal to 1. So we can actually get rid of that. And what we get is, uh, this turns into minus 2u times sine of gamma. That's what we finish with. So v sub x is equal to u cos of gamma minus 2u times the sine of gamma. Alright, so just take note of that. We'll do v sub y. Remember, of course, as normal, I am uh, limited in space. Or the f I have a finite amount of space. So v sub y. We do that similarly, we get u times the sine of gamma plus g times the cosine of 45 over g times the cosine of 45 times negative 2u times the sine of gamma. Clearly this just cancels out here. And what we're left with is that u sine gamma minus 2u sine gamma all right, which turns out v sub y is equal to negative u sine gamma. Negative u sine gamma. All right, that was pretty straightforward. So all we need to do next is get the tangent of beta, which is the angle at which the particle strikes the inclined plane when it finishes. And that, of course, is going to be v sub y over v sub x. So just let me clear up my board here. All right, so I'm going to start with black. So I'm going to say the tangent, tan beta, is equal to v sub y over v sub x is equal to. Uh, what do we have? We had v sub y was equal to negative u times the sine of gamma over u times the cosine of gamma minus 2u times the sine of gamma. Now before I continue, I did this solution on a, a piece of paper prior to doing this and in the end I had a, I had a negative sign wrong, so somewhere in the along this I expect to have a negative sign incorrect, but the answer is, 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 is correct either way. Of course if we look at this, the, we can cancel the u's like so. Alright, so we're not doing so, so badly. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide everything by a cosine of gamma. And the reason I'm going to do that is because we're looking for an answer involving tan alpha. or And because ga alpha is, is, we'll say, made up of this gamma here, then we need to divide by cos to make this a tangent. So we get 
tangent beta is equal to, uh, I'm going to pull out this negative sign. So we have this, we're going to have tangent of gamma over 2 tan gamma minus 1. All right, so we're doing we're doing very well so far, in fact. All right, so the next thing we need to do is manipulate this again. Now, I suppose I, I in in doing this, I might go round about a small bit, but I will always be going in the general direction of the answer. All right, so that's now what I'm going to do next is divide across by tan gamma. There's no particular reason for this; it's just I find it easier to manipulate when it is in that form. So we have tan beta is equal to negative 1 over 2 minus 1 over tan beta. Oh, not tan beta, excuse me, tan gamma. All right, now what's tan gamma? Tan gamma is cos over sine, or it's, sorry, is sine over cos. So 1 over it turns out to be cos gamma over sine gamma. The next thing I'm going to do is change gamma because we know that's equal to alpha minus 45. So we get tan beta is equal to a negative sine outside times 1 over 2 minus cos alpha minus 45 over the, over the sine excuse me of alpha minus 45. Now, if you look in your log tables, if you look in your log tables, you will uh, see the following. I'm going to draw this in red. You will see the cosine of a minus b is equal to cos a cos b plus sine a sine b. Similarly, you will see if sine a minus b is equal to sine a cos b minus cos a sine b like that so what we're going to do here is sub these two expressions in for our uh, well our, our former tangent gamma alright so let's just go ahead and do that and I'm going to do it in black still so we have a tangent beta, we have a tan beta is equal to a negative sign outside and we have 1 over 2 minus. Now this turns out to, remember with cos, we had cos, actually before I do that just one thing to note here, one thing to note here of course is that the cos of 45 is equal to the sine of 45 and that's equal to 1 over root 2. So what I'm going to do is plug that straight in. Sorry now if this is getting a slight bit messy. So we get, uh, we get, just let me look here now, we have cos alpha over root 2. We have plus a sine alpha over root 2. Now I'm just going to draw in a different colour here, this, this, this line, just to make things clear. And under that, because we're dividing by sine, we have sine alpha over root 2, and we have negative cosine alpha over root 2. Now the next thing we can do here is because all of these expressions are divided by root 2, then we can just cancel them because, remember, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the uh, up inverse of the fraction or turning it upside down and multiplying. So if I turn this upside down and multiply we'll get rid of all the root 2's. And that's what we'll be left with. We'll be left with cos alpha plus sine alpha over sine alpha and that was a minus if I'm correct. That's a, a negative sign there. Alright? So we're getting quite close now to the end. So the next thing I'm going to do is multiply uh, we'll, we'll, uh, that's excuse me in my little bracket here. I'm going to just rearrange this fraction at the bottom here, and I'm going to do it like so. I say tan beta is equal to one over 
and does a, we'll say a negative 1, take that, that nine minus up there. So this comes 2 sine alpha minus 2 cos alpha minus cos alpha minus sine alpha. And all of that is underneath, or excuse me, over sine alpha minus cos alpha. Now, what I might do is actually put this in a different color so we, so that we might see this. So, I'll get rid of that. Put them in the same color. I'll put them both in green. Nope, my green doesn't want to work. So, just bear with me now one moment and I'll see if I can make this clearer. So, the red line is actually is the same red line. Does It, it stays unchanged. Alright? So, just bear with me now and I'm going to move back to the top of my board. So just take that in while I write this write this down. So we have Alright, we're nearly there now. We're getting very close to the end of this question. Or this part of this question. So to go back up to the top, I've just rewritten that, that expression that we just worked out there. Now remember, of course, we're trying to get a tan alpha. Alright, we're trying to get a tan alpha. So anyway, the first thing we can do here is just, there are things to be uh, cancelled or added, we'll say here. So we get tan beta is equal to negative 1 over... And I'll draw that in red. I'll continue to draw that in red, in fact. Over. Now we have 2 sine alpha here. And minus the sine alpha there, we just get a sine alpha. Alright. And we get um, minus 3 cos alpha here. And that's over sine alpha minus cos alpha. So once again we're dividing by fractions so I'm going to turn this upside down and multiply and we'll get tan beta is equal to um, I'll just do it explicitly first of all so it's minus 1 over 1 times sine alpha minus cos alpha over sine alpha minus 3 cos Alpha. All right, so I just turned the fraction upside down and multiplied by it. So that's just very explicit. We're going back to third, year, third, third, third class maths, in fact. So tan of beta is equal to cos alpha minus sine alpha over sine alpha minus 3 cosine alpha. So here we're going to employ a trick that we did before. We want to create tan. So tan is sine over cos, and if I divide across everywhere by tan, or by, excuse me, by cos, I should get a tan. So we have tan of beta, uh, so we get 1 minus tan of alpha times the tan of alpha, or, excuse me, over the tan of alpha, minus 3. Now, is that correct? 1, tan, one minus tan of alpha. Yeah, so this is where I said my, my uh, this is where I said my my sign was incorrect somewhere. So the the answer that's given in the book is tan beta is equal to no, it's equal to tan alpha minus one over three minus tan alpha. Now just let me see if that's correct. So we've just reversed it there. Yeah. So it just I've missed a negative sign somewhere. I just couldn't cop it to be honest. It's not a big deal at all. All right. So that was it was long. There's no doubt about that. That was long, but uh, yeah, it wasn't too difficult in the end. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.